All right, what you should see when you draw your stack diagram is something like this. First, there will be a return address on the stack immediately when you get into the first assembly instruction in main. This will be your stack address and this will be the return address. Next, main is going to allocate hex 28. That's that mystery hex 28 that we don't really understand yet, but we'll figure out later. Then main is going to call into func and that's going to cause it to push a return address onto the stack. Furthermore, func is going to allocate hex 18 worth of space but then you'll see that i, being a integer, only has four bytes, and so that hex scalable value goes onto the stack at FDC zero. But you might have, you know, drawn the actual literal value for this and this and this and this. But the reality is, if you don't see assembly initializing something, which we don't for this address space or this address space, that means it's actually undefined. It's uninitialized space or it's padding space of some sort undefined and that's what we should actually draw there. So in particular on scalable if you would have looked at the assembly instruction you would have seen that it says it's actually moving a d word pointer worth of, of data into that memory. So I need to highlight an element of the RMX form that I skipped before. Specifically in Intel syntax when you're using the RMX form, it will actually annotate it with uh, this portion at the beginning saying, for instance, keyword pointer, D word pointer, word pointer, byte pointer, etc. And so that's essentially telling you in this move instruction, that's moving some value to memory. So here it's using immediates to memory, here it's using a register to memory. It's telling you what is the size of data which is going to be written to memory. And I told you before when we were talking about uh, you know, values being written to registers. I said that, you know, if you're moving a 32-bit value to a 64-bit register, Intel, you know, expands that with zero uh, extension. But I said that doesn't apply to memory. So here, if you write exactly 32 bytes, D word pointer worth of content to memory at RSP, you're going to get exactly 32 bytes. So let me show you a quick example of how you can uh, for instance, see the difference between things that are initialized and not initialized easily in Visual Studio. So in single local variable, if we go ahead and start the debugger, I'm going to go ahead and continue and hit this breakpoint at func. I'm going to go to the disassembly. We can see this is that hex 18 worth of space being allocated on the stack. I've got my memory window down here that is at RSP and it's continuously reevaluating so that it always stay at RSP. If I now step over this instruction, it will have done the sub 18 RSP. I can actually click into the memory view here and I can just start typing ones. And so I can go ahead and initialize this hex 18 myself to all ones. And now when I step through the assembly, I will see when stuff changes. So this next instruction is gonna be moved scalable to RSP, D word pointer size, so it should be four bytes. If I step over this instruction, I will see scalable is there, but this is all still ones, meaning that, you know, it wasn't actually touched. But I can further, you know, change this to a four byte view instead of an eight byte view, and then it'll make it more clear that these ones were not touched whatsoever, and these four bytes right here just had scalable move there. So that's a little trick that'll possibly be helpful for you in determining uh, what is, you know, initialized, what is uninitialized. But really the authoritative source is, you know, what are the sizes that are being specified uh, in move instructions when things are being, you know, targeting an RMX form. All right, so what's our takeaway from single local variable? Well, we can see that local variables are allocated on the stack. So this assembly taking this value for what is clearly the local variable i, putting it onto the stack at RSP means that, you know, local variables must exist on the stack. But another big takeaway is that Visual Studio is clearly over allocating space on the stack for four bytes of data. It's allocating hex 18 and we don't know why that is. So let's go ahead and add another thing to our mystery list. Why is Visual Studio over allocating space for a single local variable? And one final thing we can say about local variables is now that we know that they're stored on the stack, if we go back to this example, foo call, main calls foo calls bar, where they've got each a single local variable. With the stack growing downwards, we have you know, the return address to get from main back to the function that invoked main. Then main has its frame. And that C, that local variable, is going to go somewhere on the stack for main's frame. 
And when main calls to foo, there's going to be a return address to get back to main. And we have foo's frame. Foo has a local variable b. When foo calls bar, it's going to have a return address on the stack. And a bar has a single local variable that it uses on the stack, but it doesn't call anything, so it's not going to have any return address.